Welcome, it's uh, Rob here from Integration Kings and I just wanted to show you a bit about using Receipt Bank to publish items that you've uploaded into Xero. So I suppose the first step is to get your documents that you've, where you've paid for expenses or you haven't paid yet um, into Receipt Bank. So you do that before they add items. There's three major methods. Uh, one is basically if you've got the PDF document sitting on your desktop or on your PC, uh, you can come to the upload screen here and then drag it in and you can do multiple items at once. Uh, the second option is that if an invoice has been emailed to you, uh, you can come to this email e address here and basically forward that document into Receipt Bank for processing. And the third option, which is available on iOS and Android, is to download the app for Receipt Bank and merely, if you're paying for a fuel docket for example, you would photograph that fuel docket, make sure it's legible, and then upload it through the Receipt Bank app. Once all the documents are uploaded, they will appear in the inbox. Receipt Bank will uh, basically process them and break them down and have a go at coding them up for you. And then they will appear in the inbox here for a bookkeeper or accountant or an internal staff member to review and publish to zero. So normally we'd come in here and we'd click on the first item. And what we're actually going to do is uh, verify that we agree with the information that Receipt Bank has processed before we publish it across to zero. So basically on the left here, you always have your document. Um, for ATO purposes, we need to ensure that that document is legible um, and could stand up as a proof of evidence of the payment. So it needs to be a genuine piece of you know, documentation. So it needs to be a genuine receipt. It can't just be the FPOS receipt. It needs to be the, you know, the physical receipt. Um, and ideally coupled with the FPOS receipt. So the first tab here basically breaks down the document type and we need to ensure that's correct. So we need to ensure that Receipt Bank has picked up the right document type, that the date is correct and that the supplier is correct. Now you can always with suppliers here by clicking on add a rule is build a rule to always code that supplier a certain way. So for example, if I always purchased Caltex and I always paid for fuel, I can code it with a rule for that supplier to always go to fuel. Once you've basically coded the document type description up here and made sure that's corrected, the next bit is to move on to the amount breakdown. So straight away, what Receipt Bank will do is re reviewing the document is it'll work out the currency it actually will take into account foreign currency fluctuations. The total amount, which is it's basically got off here, um, it should normally pick up the GST if it's legible. However, sometimes you will need to calculate it or adjust these items. That is why we do this review, so you can adjust them. So you basically put in what it should be, so it's $5.40. Then over here, you would put it to motor vehicle expense if that's where you're coding it to. Under projects, you have the op option for tracking categories. Uh, you'll see here that because we've changed the coding, you can tell it to remember that for the future. You just hit apply. And once we've done all this, the amount section is correct. Um, we move on to the payment section of the processing. So down here, we choose whether the document is paid or not. So in this case, it has been paid. It's been paid on credit card. So we go, yes, it's been paid. The next question is to pick out payment method if you go yes. So basically from here is we nominate the bank account that it was paid on. So that when it pushes across the zero, it'll push to the right bank account for reconciliation. Uh, if you selected no, obviously you don't choose a payment method. Because we've chosen that we've paid it, then we publish it to a bank account. If we chose that no, we didn't pay it, we would remove the payment type and we would publish to purchases. And when you pub choose to publish it to purchases, you can also choose to what space, what um, status do you publish it to in zero. So in this case, we'll say, look, we're putting it to waiting for payment because it hasn't been yet paid. Then it's just a matter of hitting publish after you finish your review and the document will basically disappear from the in-train receipt bank 
and will be pushed across to zero for reconciliation or for monitoring in the accounts payable. So I'll just go for another example here. Uh, we've bought some, some um, items for the office uh, from a, a local store. So basically you can see nearly everything is correct. Um, the only thing I need to change in this case is the breakdown of the item. Uh, it's even picked up the credit card correctly because I've used the FPOS receipt. Um, so there was not much work in here in terms of doing my books and I basically hit publish. And that's, that's basically it to processing for a receipt bank. The reason we do the review rather than making it fully automated is so that you can ensure you're 100% happy with the data before it processes over across to zero. Thanks for joining us today.